well very good afternoon to all of you and welcome to parallel technical session 5 in hall a it is my pleasure to introduce the chair and co chair of today's session the chairman dr pradeep kumar is a senior principal scientist at the csir cbri roorkee he completed his mtech and phd from iit roorkee he is ex senior principal scientist and professor at association of scientific and innovative research he was awarded long term dad fellowship by government of germany and worked at the university of essen during 91 92 he represented four member indian de delegation to visit norway during the year 2006 He is actively engaged in R&D at CSIR, CBR, CBRI, particularly on ground improvement and design of foundation work with respect to weak soil deposits. He is also sir, he also served as the honorary secretary of Indian Geotechnical Society for two terms till 2020, and he represented the national executive of Indian Geotechnical Society. Welcome, you sir. The co-chair of this session, Dr. B. Janaki Ramayya. he is an assistant professor in the civil and environmental engineering department at iit tirupati he obtained his phd from iit delhi dr ramayya's areas of interest are geotechnical and geo environmental engineering soil dynamics ground improvement and in situ testings and he published more than 20 research papers in reputed international and national journals as well as conferences welcome you sir so it is a pleasure to have <coughs> dr pradeep kumar and dr janaki ramayya with us and also i welcome previous vishwanatham today's keynote speaker and welcome to all the participants now i hand over the session to the chairs please thank you very much thank you professor shrivan sir so this is at the outset i would like to thank the organizers to offer me the chair position of this technical session where we have some wonderful research works to be presented by young researchers across various institutions i am sure that all of us virtually present in the session uh, including me are looking forward for an in depth paper presentation by professor bvs vishwanathan from iit bombay i happened to meet him uh, about 7 8 years back he is a very dynamic person he will be presenting the soap lecture on studies on modeling of dynamic compaction in geo centrifuge apart from this i see a total of five papers are to be presented which focuses on various technical aspects of ground improvement these papers are to be presented by mr malay kumar dev mr sufiani ghani ms rani b wath miss sri vansi and miss b manjula devi so all these studies are of great importance from the point of view of achieving a sustainable and viable green solution which will not only be beneficial for our environment but also will be helpful in achieving an economic engineering solution for the existing challenges that mother soil throws on us if all these speakers are present then i would like to cordially welcome all of you including the co-chair of this session dr b janki ramayya iit tirupati let us follow the time limitations strictly during the paper presentation for a well planned session at the end of this session i request co-chairman to please propose the vote of thanks and with this i would like to hand over the platform to co-chairman dr b janki ramayya thank you very much yeah thank you dr pradeep sir uh, for your uh, uh, introductory remarks and also the co session coordinator dr sivil sir for having me introduced and uh, uh, giving me opportunity to serve as a co chair uh, without further waste of time uh, we will move on to the uh, sessions uh, i now i would like to request uh, first we have a session on the state of the art practice by the towering personality professor b s vishwanathan 
uh, I would like to have formally introduce uh, him, although he doesn't require special introduction, but it's a formality. So, uh, Professor Vishwanathan Karu is a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, from February 2009. Professor Vishwanathan has more than three, 30 years of experience in teaching and research. He obtained his uh, doctor in from uh, Ruhur. Fine. Yeah, it happens. Eh? Sorry. Yeah. I will continue. So, Professor Vishwanathan holds two patents and he published the more than 170 papers in reputed journals and conferences. And his research interest includes centrifuge modeling of geotechnical problems, geosynthetics and ground improvement, environmental geotechnics, polar utilization, etc., including natural hazard mitigation. So it's a pleasure and honor to have Professor BVS Vishwanatham amongst us. And now I hand over the session to Professor. Please. OK. Uh, so uh, I just I think uh, Janaki has come. The session. Yeah, sir, we, the state of the art practice lecture is 30 minutes, and we will have followed by the five minutes question and a session. So we will be enjoying the lecture. Actually. So, uh, so with the permission from the chairman and uh, co-chairman and uh, the organizers, uh, this is a long-standing conference, uh, finally, uh, like OTT. Uh, we actually are uh, doing online. Otherwise, we would have got a, uh, you know, the benefit of meeting all of you. So I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for giving this uh, wonderful opportunity, the seventh uh, Ikragi conference. And uh, in this conference, uh, uh, particularly when uh, uh, the organizers contacted me, um, they told me that, uh, you know, this is a state of the art lecture wherein uh, they would like me to present a research topic as well as and uh, mostly how earthquakes can be modeled in a geocentrifuge. So here uh, in this particular uh, uh, slide, you are seeing some three new terms. I can say that modeling, it's not a new term. Dynamic compaction is uh, one of the terms now every geotechnical engineer is aware of that, a geocentrifuge. So geocentrifuge you know, there is also bio centrifuge. So any centrifuge which is actually used for geotechnical applications, it can be called as a geotechnical centrifuge or bio centrifuge, uh, sorry, it's a geocentrifuge. And uh, this particular work uh, is actually is done uh, by my, uh, you know, uh, co-researcher, Dr. Saptarishi Kundu, uh, an excellent uh, Petri student. Uh, I always call him a COVID graduate. He just graduated before the COVID, March 2020, and then the COVID came. And, uh, uh, you know, thank you for the nice introduction. And uh, so I'd like to, you know, inter uh, introduce, uh, you know, these uh, three concepts, how we can actually do the modeling of uh, dynamic compaction and uh, how the scaling can be achieved and what are the problems and uh, you know how this can be uh, done through a geocentrifuge. The centrifuge or a centrifuge modeling or centrifuge based physical modeling is nothing but a small scale physical modeling technique in which a small scale model is subjected to high gravities by rotating about a vertical axis in a horizontal plane. So that is one of the physical modeling technique. Suppose if you don't have this avenue of physical modeling, then you are having a uh, this uh, two options. One is to go with uh, full scale physical modeling. Other one is called small scale physical modeling. When you do with a full scale physical modeling, you are actually doing in the field, okay? And uh, you are actually recording everything in the real time, real ground conditions, real motion, everything and all. Okay. Many times it's very difficult for us to do, uh, you know, controlled tests in the field. But if you are doing, that is regarded as the one of the best uh, avenue for geotechnical engineers even today. Then if you are not able to do physical modeling uh, at full scale, then uh, the next is the, you know, when it comes to that is 1G. One, one that is called 1G modeling, which we are very much familiar. Okay. So uh, in the 1G modeling, when we do, uh, there is a possibility that, uh, you know, the uh, tau is a function of sigma where the confinement effects, the stress effects comes into picture. That means that 
if a model is reduced let us say 10 meter uh, height of thickness of the model is reduced by let us say 10 uh, n is equal to 10 that means that the thickness of the model is only 1 meter so vertical stress at the bottom of the model is only uh, 10 into uh, say uh, uh, 20 so around 200 kilo pascals 200 by 10 is only 20 kilo pascals is the vertical stress so we know that the performance of a soil when you are actually having a 20 kilo pascal stress and 200 kilo pascal stress a 200 kilo pascal stress is the real time uh, you know the real stress but what you are actually having a scaled down stress which is uh, you know 20 kilo pascals if you are doing some sort of uh, for certain type of soils certain category of tests if you are doing 1g model tests many times uh, they give some information but i am not actually against about the 1g models but uh, they they try to give uh, some sort of uh, Uh, you know misleading information so i will begin this lecture by acknowledge the you know excellent support uh, which uh, we receive from our uh, uh, centrifuge uh, facility staff particularly the person who runs the equipment the person who makes the models and the person who actually instruments the models and all those things and all so is excellent combination with that only we could achieve uh, you know whatever i am actually going to share to you so um going to the next actually uh in order to why we are doing all these uh, you know the second term what dynamic compaction is basically you know the typical uh, failures which actually can cross you know this is this is the you know the theme of the conference is that you know uh, how the earthquakes can actually create uh, you know uh, distress i have seen that uh, professor uh, gopal madabushi and professor algamal and other experts experts are actually going to speak and uh, here these type of things when they are actually happening in our case and they actually can cause alarming uh, situations to us and uh, despite of uh, you know the uh, you know virus problems we can also have you know the problems due to this particular uh, natural hazards so what you see here is that uh, you know what i understand is that christchurch uh, you know liquefaction which actually has been put by ndma and uh, there are also some uh, building failures As you can see that some typical uh, you know fail, failure of a road and uh, in the building collapse so these things actually will cause uh, you know alarming situations as far as this thing is concerned and uh, if you are able to you know try to find the avenue for uh, improving then you know we actually have got uh, many uh, methods for the countermeasures so i am actually concentrating here you know what are the countermeasures against you know liquefaction let let us say that you know we all know the liquefaction and methods to prevent this uh, or counter the occurrence of liquefaction means uh, you actually have to do a correct uh, improvement ground improvement so one of the methods actually increase in density solidification and adjust of the grain size distribution and uh, some lowering of the degree of saturation you know below the foundation they actually try to pump the air so that uh, the degree of saturation of the soil is decrease and the degree of the less the degree of the saturation and less susceptible to the liquefaction and uh, there are some uh, you know replacement methods by vibro flotation replacing the uh, you know the stones uh, uh, soil with uh, stones and densifying the surrounding soil and our principle actually comes somewhat in the densification method and there are also some methods like uh, uh, dissipation of the excess pore water pressure uh, which is uh, the dissipation and control of the pore water pressure and there uh, i i uh, frankly i i must uh, tell the shear strain restraint method is one method which in fact i have not really come across that one so there are number of avenues for improving the uh, soil from the liquefaction so we are actually going to select one of the methods uh, like uh, what i can say is that uh, how we can actually densify the soil uh, with the help of uh, you know uh, method which is called one of the methods called dynamic compaction so before that you know why we need uh, to model the earthquake uh, in these centrifuges is there any relevance is there one thing is that you know the earthquake centrifuge modeling is uh, uh, you know is a uh, one of the natural phenomenon which occurs uh, in the field and it actually has got the ill effects uh, you know damaging the structures and uh, you know there can be subjected to uh, some sort of uh, you know uh, distress in the structures okay 
and uh, we though the lot of uh, work is actually happening very little quantitative field data exist in the response of the soil deposits uh, deposits as well as the geotechnical uh, structures for a strong motion and uh, the opportunities basically to study the phenomenon of earthquake induced liquefaction is the principle driving this thing many people actually have done the classic works which i am not going into detail but uh, in this uh, what centrifuge model testing offers and uh, basically is a unique of opportunity to actually uh, test the performance of the structures before the earthquake actually what happens in fact now the with the advent of the uh, you know the cameras you know high speed cameras we can see uh, how the structure is actually performing uh, during the earthquake otherwise uh, with the without these things we used to see before the earthquake after the earthquake uh, then we used to see but now with the advent of the uh, cameras which are actually having uh, 500 frame per second or 1000 frame per second they are able to record what is actually happening before the earthquake actually happens and during the earthquake when it is being subjected to that one so this gives an opportunity for us to simulate that natural event in a controlled manner and understand its behavior at uh, you know uh, at its scale at its full scale at its full scale and try to see its behavior and if if the uh, particular remedial measure is actually working for us then it actually is like a our design is going with condens is like a you are designing with the condens that's what actually many countries believe that analyze test and construct analyze analyze means you do whatever the analysis you want to do whatever the numerical modeling you want to do test test is nothing but appropriate testing and construct so atc policy is the one which is actually if you are able to get it to our uh, uh, arena then it is actually is going to benefit us very nicely so otherwise suppose if you are not having this avenue the only way is to instrument a full scale structure and wait for that quake event we are also working on some other uh, uh, you know uh, as are natural hazards like rainfall and other flooding and all those things and all if you wanted to understand their behavior you have to construct a structure and create a flooding or you wanted to understand this uh, you know slope subjected to rainfall you have to construct a full scale slope and put it in the campus and wait for the rainfall to occur but we also don't know which intensity is coming and how, how long it will come and what is going to come and all but if we are having a controlled earthquake or controlled rainfall or controlled flooding there is a possibility that we'll be able to understand the response of a small scale model when it is at the full scale stresses so simulation of earthquake conditions in the centrifuge requires careful consideration and one thing here is that it is not very easy in fact we are not at successful in creating uh, you know base motion but uh, with god's grace when everything goes on well uh, should be able to uh, place a base motion creator for the at iit bombay and uh, the selection of the model container in fact uh, here the non reflecting boundaries are very much important like lot of uh, work also has happened in india like uh, professor sk prasad who actually has done phd in uh, japan also brought uh, you know technology of uh, laminar containers in iic bangalore also uh, i think professor sitaram and others professor madhavilata they have used uh, non reflecting boundaries uh, containers and all for 1g model testing so this is uh, you know very interesting one non reflecting boundaries and maintaining the leak proofness of that is actually is very very difficult very very important and then uh, you know what i am actually highlighting here is that appropriate fluid in the soil why there is a requirement of uh, having an appropriate fluid in the soil which we are going to discuss but i actually said that in modeling earthquake one is to you have to create a powerful uh, base motion creator and that what we call as a shaking system and second one is that in a proper uh, earthquake uh, model container generally we have got uh, you know uh, hexagonal shape uh, containers rectangular containers or uh, you know then there is a need for tweaking with the model pore fluid which is very very difficult okay now let us uh, consider uh, this i picked from my lecture notes uh, where uh, you have got an embankment which is having a prototype dimensions let us say l is the length dimension and uh, this uh, having a certain height has been sub subjected to some sinusoidal motion let us say that the displacement is given by 
amplitude in prototype sin 2 pi fp tp tp is the period fp is the frequency and uh, when you differentiate once you will get the displacement of the small element and when you differentiate once you will get the acceleration which is nothing but minus of 2 2 pi fp whole square ap sin 2 pi fp tp so this is the amplitude the perturbance which is actually subjected in the field now let us assume that when we are actually trying to consider the small scale physical modeling that l is not l which is l by n and all this element also if it is having a dimensions of dx dy dz dx by n dy by n and dz by n the volume is reduced by 1 by n cube but if the stress is sigma here the stress is also in a small scale model is actually sigma so let us uh, now try to consider that you are having a model which is lm is equal to lp by n and i am having a small element which is dx by n dy by n and dz by n and it is also subjected to same identical motion uh, same same motion or identical motion xm is equal to am amplitude in model and sin 2 pi fp tp suppose the amplitude in the prototype is say uh, 15 mm in the model it will be 15 by n n nothing but the gravity at which actually it has been subjected that means that if you scale down this by let us say 30 gravities then uh, L, lm is equal to n is equal to 30 lm is equal to lp by n then this n is equal to 30 when i see this one here if it is made of say material gamma uniform material gamma then in this case at this point the stress is nothing but sigma v is equal to gamma uh, into z gamma if i write into rho g z okay so sigma v is equal to rho g z but mass density is same in model and prototype with that what will happen when the gm becomes ngp and uh, this hp is equal to or lm um, uh, hp is equal to hm by n then what will happen the stress here is equal to sigma v is equal to in sigma v in model is equal to rho g hp uh, rho g hp so that means that if a small scale model is subjected to uh, you know uh, if you are scaling down by n times and if it is subjected to uh, n time gravity level then there is a stress strain stress equality when stress and strains are equal the response of a model will be close to that in the field so when the model is rotating about a vertical axis in horizontal plane assume that you are actually seeing the plan view what you are seeing in the screen is the plan view and you are seeing the model like this and uh, if this is the gravity level of course we are also having when the when the model is subjected to high gravities we are having the some errors or we can say limitations they are like you know variations in the gravity level variations of the gravity level with horizontal distance and vertical stresses errors due to vertical stresses and there is also one more error or effect which is called coriolis effect that is also going to affect our results very very severely now let us assume that this is the uh, velocity that is with which the model is rotating so if uh, if ng is equal to r omega square then i can say that v is equal to r omega the model will be rotating at a, a certain velocity okay so if you are actually trying to uh, understand about 100 gravities at 100 gravities the model will be rotating at uh, you know a speed which is like a you know hurricane which actually will be subjected in the chamber and we do this type of research at iit bombay and uh, where uh, we actually have got uh, you know 4.5 meter uh, radius uh, large beam centrifuge facility at available at iit bombay and uh, which actually has got a new ornament uh, very recently which actually has got high speed data acquisition system which act, uh, about 108 channel data acquisition system has been in place now and uh, we are able to you know acquire the data uh, with and without uh, uh, wire, uh, wireless connection that is one of the recent addition uh, which actually happened during the covid okay now with this what will happen is that if xm is equal to amplitude times in model sin 2 pi of um, uh, tm and the displacement uh, uh, is nothing but uh, an am amplitude when i take this one amplitude and velocity when i do the differentiation i'll get this one this coefficient acceleration this one now what i will do is that in the if the model the linear dimensions have scale factors 1 is to n and acceleration uh, you know is increased n times that is 1 by 1 is to 1 by n then in order to maintain the similarity if the amplitude has to be 1 by n the frequency has to be n that means that if you understand uh, you know one heads 
to 5 hertz frequency is the earthquake normal uh, which is reported one cycle per second to uh, you know 5 hertz one, one hertz to 5 hertz let us say if you are actually thinking about modeling one hertz earthquake that means that the base motion creator or a shaking table should actually have uh, n times of that of the uh, frequency what you are thinking in the field that is nothing but n times the frequency in the uh, uh, prototype that means that if one hertz means at 60 g 60 cycles per second 60 hertz that means that 60 cycles per second when you say that frequency is actually n times the time is 1 by that means the time actually is actually reduced that means that the moment you open your eyelid and close that earthquake has come and uh, ended so that means that you need an event or event recorder wherein you are able to you know record the uh, data very very efficiently so for example let with f1 by fp is equal to n and x, uh, amplitude in model and prototype is 1 by n then the velocity velocity component is 1 you see that one and another thing is that the time in model that's what i'm telling the the earthquake let us say 60 second duration that means that in at 60 g in 1 second beginning of the earthquake and ending of the earthquake it happens now let us say we are here having a two categories of models suppose if you are having an embankment resting on clay okay or embankment resting on saturated sand now in this case what will happen when the embankment resting on the clay during the earthquake it is experiencing per seismic perturbance with the tm by tp is equal to 1 by n and once it is subjected to after post that one it can be subjected to uh, you know some dissipation very very slow in clay but if you are having a situation where you know uh, the seismic perturbance which actually creates the rise of the pore water pressure and the dissipation because of the virtue of the permeability of the material with, uh, on which the earthquake disturbance is created if both are actually uh, you know occurring simultaneously then you actually have a conflict whether to adopt tm by tp is equal to 1 by n or tm by tp is equal to 1 by n square what is the you know the serious effect of that is that before your earthquake completed tm by tp is equal to 1 by n square that is the seepage event or any diffusion event is scaled down as tm by tp is equal to 1 by n square which is actually much faster than tm by tp is equal to 1 by n we are thinking that frequency is n times earthquake itself is actually faster but the dissipation itself is going to be very very faster so here there is a scale conflict actually it happens this need to be resolved how we can resolve i will also tell you there are two methods one is that you know uh, like you know, reduce the permeability of the soil there are uh, bruce cutter professor bruce cutter and others what they have done is that we know that k is equal to cd tan square hazen's formula okay so d tan in model by d tan in prototype i will 1 by root n i will scale down i will actually shear it i will uh, stretch the particles such that i'll bring it to 1 by uh, when the permeability also becomes 1 by n so reducing the permeability by shredding the particles but what will happen you know the response of the soil to the loading the soil constitutive behavior may be altered the soil response is actually is different so we actually have uh, you know if you are actually having a sandy soil and if you make a silty soil and if you say that uh, both sand and silt are uh, identical which is not possible to understand or digest the another avenue is that people said is that if you are able to increase the viscosity without actually sacrificing the effective stresses there is a possibility that we will be able to meet this requirement so this is actually valid for fine sands or sands with less amount of silt and uh, not valid for clay soils because those who have worked with clays they will understand even to do a consolidated and drain test in the clay it will take 7 to 14 days or into consolidation it will take around 14 days for consolidation is very very difficult okay so even to you know get the sample saturated by using delta u by delta sigma 3 by using uh, uh, the so called uh, um, pore pressure parameter is very difficult but if you are actually having uh, fine sands and sands sands with some uh, fines up to 10% i'm talking about non plastic fines there is a possibility that we can actually replace the pore fluid how we can replace let us see that first method one is ruled out because shredding of soil particles which is very very difficult now uh, we all know that uh, you know when while teaching permeability we actually introduce a term called quotient of permeability 
and uh, k absolute permeability and uh, unit weight of water and uh, you, uh, you know uh, kinematic viscosity of water okay so k is the absolute permeability is a function of you know kozni karman equation when you take into consideration or a taylor equation when you consider into that and the higher the specific surface area uh, you know that uh, less is the permeability all those things we know so k is the absolute permeability which is a function of soil skeleton if you are able to have identical soil skeleton that km and kp both are same gamma w is nothing but the unit weight of water mu is the uh, you know one centi stroke at 20 degrees uh, is for water at 20 degrees that is the kinematic viscosity of water now let us write km is equal to uh, capital k suffix m gamma m uh, nu m and this prototype also i do write that and i put km by kp when i substitute here uh, you know assuming that uh, i have unit weight of water going to increase at high gravity so km n gamma p and assume that i have got a uh, pore fluid which is n times viscous n times viscous than prototype so i have taken you know n mu uh, mu p into vp by gamma p with that what will happen km by kp is equal to 1 if i don't substitute this one i will get km by kp is equal to n the km by kp is equal to n means the model actually has got higher permeability with that uh, what will happen time in scale fact time the diffusion scale factor i will get as 1 by n square now i am having problem with tm by tp is equal to 1 by n square in order to make my dynamic scale factor with the uh, cp scale factor what i am trying to do down is that i am trying to slow down my diffusion event by making reducing the permeability so vm is equal to km im vp is equal to kp ip so with that i will get vm is equal to vp that's darcy velocity or flow velocity which is same but tm by tp is equal to 1 by n so with that i am able to match these two previously it was 1 by n square now i have got both the uh, scale factors to equal one so this means that you know uh, you actually need to substitute water with the conventional another pore fluid we are having several pore fluids in the market like for example uh, 100 cm stroke of uh, uh, silicon fluid is 100 times more viscous uh, than water but has virtually same density but it is actually little little, little bit higher heavier than water suppose if you are having a higher viscosity it like mercury if it is having higher uh, let us say higher density there is a possibility that our effective stresses in model and prototype they don't match with each other then we have the again response of the model and prototype will be a problem so with this if you are able to replace the pore fluid and km is equal to kp if i am able to get that the time scale for factor for the diffusion is equal to 1 by n and as well as that of equal to that one as same then there is a possibility that tm by tp is equal to 1 by n so here i wanted to explain uh, for the people here uh, excess pore water pressure and uh, time if i plot it if you are actually having in the field what will happen when there is a seismic perturbance at a particular point below the uh, model uh, in the full scale structure this is how the excess pore water pressure generates okay in the with the centrifuge model with water there is a raise and then dissipation takes place so here with water as the pore fluid and uh, the accumulation of uu is reduced due to high permeability okay but what i need is somewhat closer to this i wanted to mimic the field so in order to do that i actually need a pore fluid so i need actually need to slow down the rate of pore water pressure dissipation if you are able to slow down the rate of pore water, pore water pressure dissipation with a substitute pore fluid then there is a possibility that you know uh, we are able to mimic what actually happens in the field if you are able to do this then the response is actually comes like silicon oil metallos glycerin so glycerin water mixers also have been used before metallos but you don't know whether the student is actually crying because of work or because of the uh, you know uh, the so called uh, use of glycerin so that is also dangerous now in the very recently Uh, the centrifuge modelers i should thank the centrifuge modelers uh, is that methyl ether or methyl cellulose the one of the products which is used in uh, in bakery uh, this thing that is actually been brought to the the centrifuge this thing very costly and that is actually is going to give you uh, the so called flexibility in the uh, this thing so in order to do this one okay before that i will get connected again how we can actually model that one 
so let us say now they i have also said that uh, dynamic compaction so this dynamic compaction is uh, something you know this is uh, in uh, german uh, uh, geotechnical engineering handbook and uh, which is actually published in 1996 so where they have published actually the uh, uh, you know dynamic compaction is nothing but dropping of a uh, you know weight known weight from a known height okay it's actually is a potential energy so when you do like this in primary pass this is called print spacing 6 meter by 6 meter and then do here and here then there is a possibility that entire ground can be uh, you know impacted there is equipment requirement is very very small but uh, there are some conditions like uh, you know particle velocity should not be high other nearby structures should not be there but here if you have got a potential energy potential energy in model and prototype is 1 by n cube so use of centrifuge modeling is actually is one of the how to use that one is actually what uh, you know is the the main crust of the this thing so basically the pounding creates a depression what we call crater and each drop low progression and in the process it, this it actually pro produces an aerial settlement and also displaces the soil so if you look in the overall you will see that uh, dynamic compaction creates uh, some sort of uh, you know this is called drop height and the tamper people actually have varied the tamper shapes square octagonal triangular and people actually have found that the octagonal one is actually effective but we have actually taken a circular one okay with that what will happen enhanced geotechnical properties reduced settlements reduced liquefaction potential and stability of the structure is retained sustainable and cost effective method and uh, wherein you actually have got uh, uh, so, you know these are the uh, depth of improvements so if you see for granular soils is something like 4 uh, to 5 meters definitely you can actually get the uh, improvement depth so this is how this is uh, one of the octagonal hamper uh, tamper or pounder which is actually used so when you do like this you will be covering the entire loose area very very nice and i have i have noticed that in india many people are actually using but one thing you i request you to note down 10 to 20 meters is the height even a reduce uh, you know by in centrifuge modeling by n 20 by n meters that means that very difficult for me to put a crane in the high gravities and do that so for that we need a mechanism so this particular technique was actually was uh, put forwarded by minard in 1975 wherein uh, you know the illustration of the dynamic compaction what he said is that whenever a drop is actually created then it actually creates some sort of uh, uh, you know uh, p and s waves and the rally waves are created so you can see that uh, uh, sorry to interrupt sir uh, another 5 minutes max okay okay so this is uh, you know you actually have got uh, uh, density densification actually takes place okay so this is uh, when you model this one in the prototype when you are having the impact velocity is nothing but 2 to gvlc initial velocity is zero with that you will get 19.21 meter per second and uh, when you do this in centrifuges so you can see that same impact velocity i am able to do that with uh, v is equal to uh, root to gh but g is equal to ng and with that 19.81 meter per second i am able to maintain this is at 50 gravity but the let us say that if i am actually modeling uh, some 20 meters and 20 tons then you know i actually have the potential energy which is mold so this is how the potential energy which is required potential energy which is in model so with that based on that you know the dynamic compaction can be created in the model this is how the you know the problem which we explained so based on uh, you know lot of deliberations we actually have deduced the scaling loss so here also the frequency of the blows will be n times and the duration is 1 by n time the duration between the each blow so we actually have two sands uh, two soils one is sand and one is silty sand and uh, you can see that uh, because we wanted to replace with the uh, uh, viscous fluid then we actually have tried different uh, viscosities with the metallos what we have taken and we found that uh, it is in line with uh, the uh, results which are published uh, elsewhere and uh, we also have seen what will happen to its viscosity uh, over a period of time uh, with the time in days and how whether the uh, you know tau, uh, tau versus sigma whether it is okay or not and uh, we also seen how the from the iodometer test the constrained modulus at 150 kilo pascals how you are getting and we also have seen with increase in vis viscosity how the permeability of the sand is actually decreasing all those things we have done and we actually have developed a, a model uh, which is uh, having a container 
and the permanent markers which we have used to particle image velocimetry and this is how the we have placed the transducers and this is how uh, you know we placed the accelerometers with vertical and horizontal direction and uh, this is the back side of the container and here we have actually in our paper is there in the astm geotechnical testing journal and those who are interested can actually uh, refer that pam tamper refer the paper and if here what you are seeing is the guiding rods as i was mentioning to you the coriolis effect is actually going to cause a big problem so if the tamper is lifted up is actually used to create a problem so this is uh, what we have done with sand and silty sand with water table we have done so this is how the setup which is actually about to be tested so we have put a, a dc motor and we actuated this one and we have we have designed a very nice mechanism and we have put uh, perpendicular to the perspex glass so that we'll be able to view from the camera so you can see uh, it will take uh, one or two minutes so let me uh, just see whether it is working or not let me see uh, normal presentation which is works but uh, you know uh, what uh, uh, you know it happens is that the tamper moves on down and down and uh, there are 16 drops have been given so with that uh, what will happen is that you will see the densification uh, which is not coming here ha ah, now with i think it's coming uh, maybe the organizers i request you for uh, uh, five more minutes professor uh, janakiramayya sure sir sure sir. thank okay. you okay so you can see that as the drops are being uh, done uh, so you can see this is happening at 30 gravities please understand and uh, and when you see uh, uh, the parallelly you know the excess pore water pressure generations also can be seen so this is how the tamper is actually working and uh, the model is rotating about a vertical axis in a horizontal plane and what we are seeing through a camera here because of that uh, we are seeing this view and this is the accelerometer which is recording and uh, let me see whether ah now you can see uh, the excess pore water pressure generation is actually coming and the front elevation also you are seeing the tamper hitting the um, you know uh tamper hitting the this thing and uh, these are the guide rods these guide rods are very much important because when the centrifuge uh, is rotating about a vertical axis any movement of the object within the uh, model is subjected to coriolis acceleration which is actually laterally drifts backwards in order to keep that in place we actually have to really struggle to resolve this one and then uh, solve that one in moment we solve that one the phd student completed the work okay so you can see how for each blow how the excess pore water pressure is being developed you can see uh, you know that is total you will see that 16 peaks that means the 16 drops why 16 drops because you know mostly for each location 16 drops are actually adopted in the field you can see this one is circular that actually indicates a proof that the water table is circular because water is not having any shear strength because of that it will actually take the circular shape so several uh, three tests have been done and uh, what you can see is that uh you know uh, this is uh, with the uh, this is with water you can see that rapid dissipation but when you have the hpmc the dissipation is actually somewhat uh, uh, slower when you have got with the silty sand there is an excess uh, very high pore water pressure and when we have used this one what you can see that dissipation is found to be very very slow so uh you know this we have used further for the particle image velocimetry to get the uh, you know the so called pore, pore fluid distribution and increase in densifications for each drop uh, for different uh, with water as well as hpmc and uh, our paper which is there in ac geotechnical geo environmental engineering also discusses for those who are interested can refer that particular paper and uh, what you can see is that this is the the depth of the uh, crater uh, improvement uh, up to 5 meters we could actually record uh, the improvement of the Uh, you know the so called increase in the relative density you can see delta rd that much is the increase in the improvement so these are the you know peak particle velocities ground accelerations which are recorded away from the uh, location you can see that the velocity is found to be you know decrease and we found that they are actually in fact uh, there are measures also which we can do for mitigating them so what i wanted to say from the major uh, this thing is that one is that of course uh, you know why i have shown earthquake modeling is that because there is a requirement which is connection 
which is that that there is a requirement of modeling pore fluid but otherwise the present uh, research work basically first time uh, as far as uh, i am uh, to the best of our knowledge hpmc was used for dynamic compaction and that too we have not uh, explored for uh, higher uh, fines in fact we are able to use for higher fines and with uh, some other uh, modifications then we can actually generate uh, much more information and basically this research work uh, presents an effectiveness of the dynamic compaction for reducing the liquefaction potential for loose sand deposits in fact uh, uh, we are now uh, trying to uh, apply this technique for the loose Uh, municipal solid waste deposits so that you know we can see that uh, because the municipal solid waste deposit also it is also like a sand only very high permeability but only difference is that high compressibility so if you are able to use this there is a possibility that you know we can increase the landfill capacities and all so basically this is what we wanted to show in fact we wanted to do for multiple points now we are actually extending that particular work and uh, the results can be subsequently employed to focus on the efforts of the expensive field trials and all so with this uh, i have come to the end of my presentation and uh, uh, i would like to thank the chairman and uh, co-chair and the organizers for giving this opportunity to share uh, some of our ideas with you and uh, i'll be very happy uh, if i am not able to answer my questions your questions will will come back with answers um, uh, with uh, some deliberations thank you very much Uh, thank you very much uh, professor vishnadan garu that was really a nice presentation and even explaining each and every term you know uh, it's actually jo centrifuge modeling is not actually a routine topic in every geotechnical engineering so i really enjoyed your presentation and i feel the participants also enjoyed the presentation and also you explained the importance of uh, the pore fluid viscosity and selection of right one you know properly modeling the effects and all very nice presentation now i request the participants the floor is open for a question and answer session please drop your uh, questions in the chat box so that i can uh, pick the one and i can ask pose it to the speaker yeah the attendees i think there are about, uh, more than 100 attendees attending on the live ready virtual platform so those who are listening you can see a question and answer Sir, tab on the top left. On top left, near to the adjacent to the lobby, uh, in between lobby and halls, there is a Q and A tab. You need to click there and ask your questions, please. Or some of them can directly they can answer. They can ask also. Yeah. On the live streaming, it is not possible, sir. But okay. on the Zoom, we can directly ask the questions. Okay, okay. okay. Yes. Uh, I am seeing only eleven participants here, but I think it is. streaming somewhere no yes sir yes, yes sir all yes. these participants are only the speakers and presenters okay 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 all the delegates are there on the 3d platform okay okay i see there is one question from one guest he is asking how to model the soil particle size oh. yeah very important very good question um, that is uh, here uh, what we call you know uh, particularly when you have got uh, uh, sand you know uh, the particle size effect what we call and uh, this uh, effect will decrease with the decrease in the uh, size of the particle so if you are having uh, uh, you know some fine sand particles so we always see suppose if the tamper is there tamper is actually hitting the soil we see that it actually it is supported by uh, innumerable number of particles let us say that if you are having a foundation foundation is supported by let us say uh, four particles then definitely the part, the particular one is going to affect with this scale effect but here if you are having a uh, same foundation model but with uh, sub, which is supported by more number of particles then there is a possibility that we can say that the particles are particle effect is minimized so generally we see that that uh, what we call dz by b or b is the dimension of the let us he in this case tamper is actually more than 30 or 40 then we can say that it is free from the particle size effects but here we have taken very fine sand uh, which is passing point uh, uh, 425 mm and also some silt which is having uh, very fine particles so the particle size effects are not there but we actually have taken into consideration yes particle size effects are going to come 
if you are actually uh, model some rock fill dam or you know some other uh, materials yes they are going to come but here uh, it is actually taken care by you know uh, resolving the so called particle size effect Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, any other questions? Please uh, put it in the chat box or Q and A session. So, regarding the your future work on municipal solid waste modeling in dynamic compaction, that will be really uh, good. Of course, it will be challenging because yeah, yeah, yeah. the few studies uh, that are now in, across the world, you know, only two people, to my knowledge, have taken up the real dynamic compaction in MSW. Yes, yes. That will be good works. Yes, yes, yes. You wanted to do, you can come to Mumbai. Sure, sir. This is my area because my PhD is on municipal solid waste. I know that. I know. I know. <laughs> Our world is small. Yes. Sir. <laughs> okay, uh, Srivas, uh, are there any other questions on the three D platform? No, no. I am not seeing any other question. Okay, uh, dear participants, uh, we strongly encourage you to discuss this, not just my presentation or your presentation. It's just a forum. We can discuss a lot of things. Please feel free to pose the questions or clarifications. Let us use the best opportunity of all the knowledge that is coming on this platform. I don't see any questions further here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you feel if you have any clarifications, uh, you can directly contact uh, Professor Mishunada Garu or through the our organizers. Uh, we can transfer the questions. Yeah, to yeah. You. Uh, you know, people can contact me uh, through email or something like that. You know, I I I think I have given. I'm not sure whether I have given my email ID in the beginning. So uh, thanks a lot, sir, for the nice presentation and. Uh, uh, we can move on to the the regular presentations now. Uh, so I I think my presentation is unshared now. It's unshared, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And uh, do we need to be there uh, till four o'clock? Uh, uh, what is the? Not can... not required, sir. Not okay. necessary. Okay. Not necessary. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can. Anyhow, yeah. anyhow I'm available actually for any questions yes, that they want. Yeah, sure, sir. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Sivalsa, and uh, also Sita Ram and others, uh, Vijayka. Yes, and uh, also, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Pradeep Kumar. And uh, I think uh, Pradeep Kumar was my, he, he went one year before to Germany. Okay. 91, 92. Okay. And uh, so, and with Janaki Ramaya, I know while he was doing PhD, I went to IIT Delhi and I met him at that time. And I'm happy to see all of you. And uh, thank you very much. Sir, uh, thank, you, thank you, Professor. Yeah, just a small question popped up, sir. If you don't mind, yeah, yeah, I, please. It's a, it's a small question also. How much a centrifuge costs? Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, okay. Yeah. See how much centrifuge setup costs. It depends upon the radius. If you are if you are actually looking for, uh, you know, one relationship, the cost of the centrifuge increases by r cube times. If r is small, your cost of the centrifuge is small. So let us say, but smaller the centrifuge. Higher are the errors. Smaller centrifuges, smaller models, higher are the errors. So if R is equal to 1 meter or 2 meters, uh, R is equal to 2 meters, which will cost you, if you wanted to commercially, they are available. Uh, it is about uh, maybe 1 crore or so. Okay, But R is equal to 4 meters or 5 meters. You require big civil works and all those things and all. That will cost definitely, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, uh, about about 10 to 15 crores. What we have got in IIT Bombay was the custom built. And uh, definitely that one will not come at whatever 5 crores at the time what we got from the government. Uh, it will not, will not, uh, the commercial available centrifuges are very, very costly. So recently I wanted to do something. And uh, they said that you have to change this and that and all. They have given a quotation for 100 crores for me for the changing of the equipment. If uh, there are 15 research scholars are there, and if I say that everything is changed, 
then it will take another three four years for me to reinstall commission that I'm done. So the larger the radius, the costliest is the cost is the cost of this interface increases. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah, we have one more question, and this will be the last question for because we are already lagging. Uh, this is the question from Mr. Shravan Kumar, sir. How the dimensions of the model are maintained stable as we we are going beyond 50 g in centrifuge test? Yeah, any suppose if you are having a footing element, it is made with a rigid element like aluminium or something like that, it will be maintained. And uh, if you are having suppose, you know, we have to see. For example, if you are if you are trying to do a slope. and if the slope fails before that quake or slope fails before the rainfall then there is no point it is already dead body okay so the the body has to be alive so that means that uh, what we have to do is that we have to do the preliminary analysis and to see that uh, that stability analysis whatever we we talk about that uh, will help in uh, uh, keeping that model alive for example whatever i have shown is a plane model nothing will happen but if you are having a slope let us say subjected to seepage and before i induce seepage slope fails there is no use of seepage effect on the slope so it is like that one generally what we do is that we try to select a factor of safety which is around 1.1 that means that just stable without water moment water comes the slope collapses okay basically here we select these dimensions such that we are able to create failures and if you are using some remedial measure let us say some reinforcement something then we will try to see that how that reinforcement is actually working suppose if the reinforcement is like a tissue paper that also fails then there is no point in reinforcing with a very weak material so it's like uh, that it depends upon generally the dimensions are decided based on the prototypes which are available otherwise uh, it should be possible in your equipment also second thing is that uh, based on some uh, possible dimensions because if you are having let us say pile pile of uh, pile uh, a pile foundation having a diameter from 0.6 meter to 2 meters let us say board cast in situ piles i'm talking and if you are trying to model like a uh, you know 5 mm or 1 mm needle there is no point in uh, modeling pile like a needle because you cannot do anything with that so you have to see that that uh, you can do some instrumentation also you can also see that actually the so called particle size effects are minimal and all these things are required to be considered given in in uh, doing and arriving at a, a dimensions of the model okay thank you very much sir uh, i think there are no other questions uh, thanks a lot thanks a lot yeah